All right, guys, Mr. Glass Eagle. Welcome to Ecology. This is our next unit. Um, we're going to start the unit today, and it's going to go on for about three weeks. And all ecology really is, is how all living things, animals, plants, fungi, bacteria, okay, a lot of things we've already discussed in class, how they depend on and interact with their environment, meaning all the non-living things like water, rock, soil. So ecology, what is ecology? Ecology studies the interactions of biotic and abiotic factors in an environment. We have to know abiotic. A always means no. All right. Right now on the news, we're hearing a lot about asymptomatic. Okay. Symptomatic means symptoms. A means no or not. So abiotic factor means no. Bio means life. Typing on this is pretty hard, drawing. So no life. Some examples of abiotic factors is soil, water, air, light, temperature, and minerals. I know water can be a little confusing because there are a lot of things that are living in the water. Right, there's microorganisms, things that we cannot see. Remember the microscopes, all the little things that we saw? Things like that do live in the water. However, the water itself, the H2O, is not living. Biotic means life, and those are all the living things in the environment. I really cannot <laughs> do that. So all the living things in the environment is all the things that you think of as living. All the different animals, all the different plants, the fungus, and the bacteria. Just like what I just said, but now it's nicely typed out for you. And again, you need to know this. This is going to be on the test. It's going to be on the quiz. It's going to be on a lot of different things. One little caveat, one little thing you need to know about abiotic it was never alive biotic is something that's alive or that was once living so if, if something passes away or if you see roadkill or a dead tree it is still considered biotic and again abiotic things that were never alive water sun uh, air and sunlight are the big three all right so there are different levels or different hierarchies of an ecosystem, okay? An organism is a single living thing that carries out all eight life functions. We've already went over the, all the eight life functions. Three are gents. Um, not going to go all of them right now, but remember growth is a big one. Reproduction is a big one. Um, transport. Uh, the next thing is species. It's an organism that is able to mate in nature with other organisms like itself and reproduce fertile offspring. Just because you're able to reproduce doesn't mean you're technically a species. Remember I talked about it in class, a lion and a tiger, they have mated, okay? They are called a liger. However, a liger is not a species because a liger is infertile and cannot reproduce more offspring. Same thing with the mule. We talked about that in class. A uh, horse and a donkey reproduce and they make a mule. Okay. However, can mules make more babies? No. So therefore, they are not considered a species. The next thing is the habitat. You guys have learned this from elementary school on. A habitat is simply where the place where organisms live. Okay, now we're building bigger and bigger. Okay, in that habitat, okay, we count up all the individual species. So a population is all the members of the same species that live in a particular area. If you want to know the population of Suffolk County, you would count up all the humans Humans is a species, all the specific humans in Suffolk County. You can get more specific, let's say Farmingville or Holbrook or Seneca. What's the population of Seneca? 
you're counting up all the students that are going to Seneca. The next is community. So now we're adding in all the different types of populations together. So we see in this picture right here, there's two populations. We have the lion, and then we have what I think are antelope or something like that here. So there's two populations, one population, two population. However, they're in one habitat, therefore they're the community. Okay, if you think about Holbrook community, we can talk about the students in Seneca, which are just a specific population. But then if we look bigger, students interact with maybe people at 7-Eleven. Okay, there's different types of populations within the community. Here is a pyramid. We're going to see this a lot. So individuals, organisms, okay? And it's how many of those individuals or how many of those organisms or how many of those species are in the area as population. Then community is the number of different populations in the area. The ecosystem is the next one. The ecosystem talks about all the living and non-living things in the environment. Okay, that is ecology as a whole, remember. So an ecosystem is all the living and non-living things in the area. Now we start bringing in water, sun, um, rocks, dirt, the land that they're on. That is considered an ecosystem. And the last one is a biosphere, which is a section of the earth. So you can consider North America a biosphere. And here's just another example of what it looks like. Okay, and we're starting with the individual. Then many individuals make up a population. Different populations together make up the community. We have rabbits, looks like a beaver, an otter, an owl, a lion, and a moose. Different populations in the area. The ecosystem brings in water, grass, animals, the mountains. The biome is, is a specific type, almost like a climate. And then the biosphere is the earth or part of the earth. And once again, we see this again, going from smallest to biggest. Okay, biotic factors, so living things are affected by abiotic factors. Okay, looking at this picture, if for whatever reason, all the green stuff starts going away, will those lovely animals up there be able to eat? Probably not. What would make these things go away? Well, we know that. What do plants need? Sun and water. Two abiotic factors. So if all of a sudden there's no more rain or this dries up because of too much sun or something like that, it controls or limits biotic factors. So think about it. How can a biotic factor be affected by an abiotic factor? We just went over that. So that is it for today. It is just the beginning. We're going to continue much more of this. I will put up all these slides so you can read them and go through them without hearing me if you don't want to. Have a wonderful rest of the week and good luck on all the work.